War Beasts of the Circle of Boros. The war beasts that serve the Circle of Boros are embodiments of the destructive power of nature. The formidable elemental constructs and the terrible living war beasts are filled with both a primal ferocity that only the druids of the Circle dare harness and control. Circle war beasts are among the most varied, serving any fighting force in Western Imran, comprising a wide variety of creatures. The Circle's war beasts must undergo specific rituals, allowing a Circle warlock to fully mentally dominate them. This process creates a powerful bond between druid and beast that, can, that lets the war beast serve as an extension of the warlock's will and allows the warlock to share in its strength, stoke its battle fury, invoke mystical effects called animi, and shut, shunt potential fatal injuries away from himself to the beast he commands. Although not wantingly cruel to their war beasts, most circle warlocks rarely regard them as more than effective tools. War beasts exist to serve the greater purposes of the Circle of Boros, and their eventual deaths, while costly, are acceptable losses so long as a warlock can achieve his goals. Circle war beasts are drawn from three distinct groups wild beasts dominated by a druid's will, constructs called wolves that are crafted from the natural elements of the world, and warp wolves created by transforming people through ritualistic magics wild beasts it may seem as though the circle's broad purview over the natural world might grant them its members the ability to control and tame any wild beast or animal in practice the druids are much more selective having learned through centuries of trial and error which creatures respond best to their needs most of the beasts utilized by the circle are predatory species strongly connected to the devourer worm and with which the druids have forged relationships with to form a responsive bond the mind of both warlock and beast must be sympathetic there are beasts that are just as predatory just as arguably tied with the worm which is impossible for the druids to control such as cold-blooded species that possess alien and intractable minds other natural animals lack qualities required for a war beast, such as supernatural resistance or ferocity. Various breeds of Argus, Griffins, Satyrs, and Goraxes are most commonly used as war beasts by the Circle. For hundreds of years, the Blackclads have assumed the role of custodians over these creatures. The Druids have subtly directed their breeding, protected their natural domains, and prepared them for battle. This process of stewardship is not domestication by any means. The druids seek to preserve the natural ferocity of the breeze in their care. Instead, they focus on developing the creatures into useful weapons and accum accumulating them to th and acclimating them to the presence of druids and their allies. The appro this approach involves training and conditioning, but long-standing contact with these creatures facilitates this process. Indeed, many of the wild predators used by the Circle as war beasts are practically ready to become war beasts by the time they reach maturity. Not every breed is equally responsive to this conditioning. The Winter Argus and the Gorax, for example, are belligerent and intractable creatures whose temperaments make them more difficult to condition and train. Still, the Blackclads know techniques for transforming even these fierce beasts into powerful weapons. There are other difficult creatures they employ as well, like the Storm Raptors of the Abyss, whose sheer power makes them worth the added effort to master. These wild living creatures have a number of advantages over other war beasts used by the black class, such as wolves. Many druids appreciate the beast's natural instincts, honed by having to hunt and kill in the wild. They retain a useful degree of autonomy and cunning, allowing them to be given free reign rather than fight rigidly than rigidly controlled. Many of these species form strong emotional bonds to a warlock and the other beasts they spend time with, viewing a battle group as a pack. This mentality creates a tight fighting synergy that some warlocks prefer. Others dislike the seething emotions of these beasts, finding them unpredictable and chaotic. Wolves. Wolves are not truly beasts at all, but rather mighty constructs given a semblance of life through a powerful druidic magic. Each wolf has been crafted with a specific role in the, in the battlefield in mind. Its very essence and the power bound into it are tied to that purpose. 
Utterly fearless and implacable in battle, worlds are mystical constructs built with slabs of shaped stone instead of vulnerable flesh, and bundles of wood bound by cords of woven rope in place of muscle and sinew. The growing, glowing runes across the surface of a world are embedded with, with the will of its creator and empowered by natural energy from sites of ley line convergence. Druids impart each world with its fundamental behavior and compel it to heed the commands of the black clads. Once a world receives a command from its master, it will follow that command indefinitely, even waiting centuries to carry it out. Ancient woes stand guard over the places of power sacred to the circle, vigilant for, for trespassers who would defile them. Over time, they became overgrown and indistinguishable from their surroundings, yet they remain ready to act the instant they are commanded to do so, and the land or, the, for, or for the land they protect is disturbed. Some druids prefer these hulking stones forms over wild beasts. A wolf needs no food or water, and never would turn on its master. It can wait generations without succumbing to age or elements. A world's only true weakness is its lack of intelligence and instinct. A world does not think or act independently. Rather, it follows exactly the instructions given to it by its master. There exist masters of world crafting who can layer versatile instructions into worlds to create complex behavior, but doing so requires tedious attention to detail and tremendous skill. The constructs will always respond predictably to a given situation, making them constant and reliable. Addendum Fabricating Wool Constructs The circle's creation of wool constructs involves complex and ancient processes. All wolds are crafted from stone or wood, with druids of different regions making use of the strongest and most resilient materials available. The most important phase of wool construction is carving mystic runes into the construct's permanent, pre preeminent stone surfaces and empowering them with energy. This instills the animating will of the druid into the construct, setting into place its powers, behaviors, and fighting capabilities. Additionally, the runes can create a connection to the ley line energies flowing through Kayan as a sort to serve as a source of power. Fresh blood is applied to the vein, to the vines, ropes, and wooden elements of larger wolds to ease the animation process. Circle forces can acquire bloods for this purpose in the natural course of battle, but sacrifices may also be used. Humans and powerful predators provide the most useful blood in these cases. End addendum. Wolds are often left as sentinels to watch over important sites in the wilderness, instructed to, to let those they or reorganize as allies pass, they as they, as they recognize as allies pass while intercepting enemies and intruders. Some of the distinctive decorative motifs shared amongst the armor worn by black clads in the wolf sworn are an aid to this recognition. Inactive woes may be mistaken for piles of lifeless stone until they erupt into activity when an interloper trespasses. Though supremely durable, woes do not possess the powers of recuperation, the vitality or the raw primal rage of living beasts. Most do not recover from damage without the aid of shifting stones or druids capable of repairing them. While making larger wolds is a time-consuming process, smaller wolds can be created in number and serve as formidable combatants fighting alongside wolf sworn. Channeling the natural power of the earth is a debt into deadly element attacks at a distance. Warp Wolves The most unusual of the war beasts at the disposal of the circle are the warp wolves. Created by the black clads from human transformations through mystical rituals, warp wolves are ferocious creatures that bridge the gap between beast and man. A warp wolf is capable of unleashing the predator within to become a murderous beast, assuming a massive and tremendously powerful new body. Warp wolves feel the pull of Cain's moons over their minds and spirits, compelling them to hunt and to kill. While superficially wolf-like in appearance, these creatures are not actually lupine. 
An unnatural killing machine, a warp wolf is perfect and adaptable predator, capable of exposing a human to a ritual involving the ingestion of a transformative elixir. The, a warp wolf's protein body can change in seconds to adapt to its needs, whether by increasing muscle mass, growing leaner or longer, or erupting into bony spikes. The origin of those chosen by the black class to become warp wolves vary. This condition is sometimes inflicted upon the circle's enemies to sow terror. At other times, the black class select the most pious of the devourer worshippers among the wolf sworn, who view this state as a means to become closer to the worm. In either case, the resulting creature can be controlled by circle warlocks and sent to fight their battles. The transformation into a warp wolf seems similar to that undergone by the Thrawn or, or the Skinwalkers, but it's more radical and essential change, creating a much larger and more powerful creature while also permanently altering its mind. Over time, a warp wolf loses its sanity as well as memories of its former life, lost in a madness of violence and feasting. Once sated and away from battle, the warp wolf returns to their former shape, though their sanity never really returns, and their speech and actions remain distorted and erratic. It is only under the supervision of the black class they are put, in, uh, put to an ordered purpose, as the druids have learned how to exploit their ferocity and employ them where they can do the most harm to their foes. As a warp wolf passes from one form to another, the, its body is remade. Wounds close and heal over in response to the supernatural regenerative properties bestowed to them by the beast. Constant shape-shifting is both physically painful and destructive to the internal organs, causing accelerated aging. Those who do not die in battle typically don't even reach more than the age of 40. Usually a warp wolf's heart gives out after years of accelerated pumping and scarring for tra from transformation. Warp wolves who have lived in this state for long periods accept their condition and abandon their humanity, losing the ability to speak and entering into an entirely feral state. Though they retain a degree of cunning from their human origins, they live only in the present, unable to remember the past or anticipate the future. They avoid interacting with other people and prefer the company of their own kind. Warp wolves can be trained to recognize friend from foe and to refrain from attacking certain people. They seek mates from among their own kind, and males will fight to compete for females as much as wild wolves do. Warp wolves that have surrendered to this bestial existence may mate with others to produce purebloods, creatures that never take on a human form. Purebloods are at ease in their ever-warping bodies, having essentially become a new species. As intelligent as humans, yet as primal with primal instincts and a seething with rage and the desire to hunt and kill, pure bloods are uniquely formidable. They are among the most intelligent of war beasts, and some are capable of speech, having learned to warp their voices to shape comprehens comprehensible words. Pure bloods often possess supernatural gifts beyond other breeds, unleashing mystical empowered howls or transforming into, inc into an incorporeal state in which they can pass through the thickest walls. Valued for their autonomy and adaptability, pure bloods are few in number but can earn a degree of respect among the black clads, unattainable by lesser intelligent war beasts. For many warlocks, they serve more as allies than actual minions.